Hey guys, Mr. King here. We are going to be talking about experimental variables and constants today. In class, we have been talking about controlled experiments and what makes a good controlled experiment. We did some practice um, with some examples in class, and then we did the virtual lab where you put the coats in the closet made of different materials and different colors, and you saw how temperature affected that. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that today and learn a little bit more about how to set one up. So in order to complete an experiment, you need to keep all factors constant while changing one thing. The thing you change is called the independent variable. And remember, as we've talked about in class, you are in charge of the independent variable. It's the thing that you change on purpose. So if we're talking about demonstrations from class, we're talking about having a person shoot the ball with their eyes open. And then when I put my hand over their eyes to block their vision, that was the thing I was in control of. So changing their sight was the independent variable. That had nothing to do with the results of the experiment. That happened on its own. But I physically took my hand and put it over people's eyes so they couldn't have their vision when they shot. That was something I completely controlled on my own. I was in charge of that. And that's called the independent variable. Now everything else has to remain exactly the same. So when we had our shooter in class, they shot from the same distance, they shot the same ball, they shot in the same target. The only difference was the first shot they had their sight and the second shot they did not. So if you wanted to have a contest with a friend to see who was the best basketball shooter, you'd have to keep everything the same except the person shooting the ball. If you're really going to have a contest to say, I'm a better basketball shooter than you are, everything has to be exactly the same, except one small thing. That's what a good controlled experiment is. In this case, that one small thing is the person shooting the ball. And once again, that's the independent variable. It's the one thing you are in charge of, and it's the one difference in the experiment. Now, I have a little clip here of the NBA three-point shootout, and this is a good example of a controlled experiment because you have two people shooting three-point shots. They each get the same number of attempts. They get the same amount of time. It's the same basketballs they're shooting from. The only difference is you've got two people shooting the ball. So that's the independent variable. So take a look at this click, uh, clip and we will see who the better shooter is. It's a one-minute shootout between Rashard Lewis and Dick Juan Cook. Now, if it's one minute, remember, he got off to slow start in the, in the championship round. Only one point over here in this corner. 33 racks. Look at this one. one minute. This has been horrible. Wow. Just for it. Congratulations, Dick Juan Cook. No, not yet. Congratulations, Dick Juan Cook. Oh, my God. You're taking, the, you're taking the title of South Beach. Oh, my that God. Everlasting so this guy's name is Rashad Lewis. They were tied, so they had to have a final shootout for one minute. You can see Rashad Lewis is not doing very well. The commentators are kind of getting on him. Each spot, he gets five different balls. So it's a total of 25 different shots. And they get a total of one minute. So it's not like you can sit and take your time. you got to fire them off pretty quickly. You'll see they move pretty quickly from rack to rack. So Rashad Lewis, although he made it to the finals and he was doing a good job, he had kind of a rough go of things. He only made seven points, so he did not do very well. So we're going to have the exact same setting for the next shooter. This guy's name is Daquan Cook. He's going to get to take 25 shots. He's going to have one minute. And all he has to do is beat seven points. Now the way this works, you get what's called the money ball is your fifth ball in each rack. And that's worth two points if you make it. All these ones are worth one point. You can see there's a special one, this last one right there. That's called the money ball. You get two points for that. Okay, so it's the completely exact same shooting competition. The only thing that's different is Daquan Cook is making tons of shots. 
So you can see he's already won. So we won't watch. We won't watch the full thing here. So when you set up the experiment, everything else remains the same. Both the shooters shot the ball from the same spot. They shot it the same number of times. The things that remain the same in an experiment are called constants. And remember, in a controlled experiment, which is a good experiment, that's the only type of experiment where you can trust the results, only one thing is different. So you're usually going to have a lot of things that are the same. So here are our constants from the basketball three-point shootout. They use the same basketballs, so they were by the same manufacturer, Spalding Balls. Um, the same number of attempts, they each got to shoot 25 total shots. There were five in each rack. Same distance, they were around the three-point arc, um, each shooting those balls from the same distance. Same amount of time, they had one minute in that finals. And then the same conditions, it was in the same arena. You couldn't have one guy shooting indoor while the other guy was shooting outdoors. Um, that wouldn't be fair. So you can see there's a lot of things that were very, very exact and the same, but there was also the one big difference. It was the person who was shooting the ball. So the results of the experiment, that is called the dependent variable. The dependent variable is the measure which tells the results of the experiment. In the basketball shooting experiment, the dependent variable is the number of three-point shots made. So we know the independent variable is the variable that you change in an experiment. The dependent variable is the thing that changes by itself because you change the independent variable. So even though that sounds confusing, it's really not. So in our basketball shooting, the independent variable was the person shooting the ball. We had Richard Lewis and Dacon Cook. The dependent variable is then changed because of those people. Our dependent variable is the number of shots made. So Richard Lewis only made three. Daquan Cook ended up with 19 points if you watch that full clip. So that changed as a direct result of having different people shoot. So that's the dependent variable. It's the variable that changes as a result of a change in the independent variable. If you had the same person shoot, then we wouldn't get a different result. Okay, so that's having different people, which yields different results. So in this experiment, to kind of recap here, we had two people shooting 25 three-point shots in the gym. Richard Lewis scored seven points while Daquan Cook made 19. According to this experiment, Daquan is the better shooter. We know these results are accurate because this is a controlled experiment. Everything was exactly the same except the person shooting the basketball. And that's what makes this a good controlled experiment. So when we're listing out what the variables were. Okay, Variables are going to be our factors that can be changed in an experiment and sometimes you change them and sometimes they change on their own. The one that you change is called the independent variable. In this case it was the person shooting. The one that changes on its own is the number of shots made that's the dependent variable. That changed all by itself because we had different people shooting the ball. And then remember your constants are the variables, variables that remain unchanged and these are always going to be exactly the same for both trials. So they use the same ball, same number of attempts, same distance from the hoop, same amount of time. So we kept a lot of things exact but we just made one small change. Now this can make an experiment take a long time if you have to do it over and over and over and just change one tiny thing but if you change more than one thing then it's not an accurate experiment. You cannot believe those results. The last thing that we're going to talk about is with our work on experimenting and with some of the different things we're going to be doing in class, safety is going to be very important, um, whether we're conducting an experiment in the laboratory or we're outside in the field. And that's very important to scientists, not only in our classroom, but all scientists. You have to make sure that you're being safe, you're not fooling around, you're not mixing chemicals that shouldn't be mixed, you're not tasting things, you're not um, smelling things with a direct um, whiff. If you remember from our bell ringer, we said whiff, not waff. So there's a, there's a lot of different things that we're supposed to be doing. And that's going to be critical for us to do lots of experiments in class is I need to know that you guys understand um, how to be safe and how to act in an appropriate manner. All right, everyone, I think that's about it for uh, Chapter 1, Section 2. Fill in your WSQ. You got the main ideas from this one. 
Um, and then you got your two questions down below. Remember, if there, you understood everything about this and you think you're brilliant on controlled experiments, uh, write me a question. Write me something that we can talk about. You want to know my opinion about something. What do I think? Or maybe can I explain this a little further for you? Even if you understand it, maybe you want to know it a little bit more. And then for your second one, remember challenge questions for your classmates. Uh, head on over to Quizstar, take your quiz. We will call this one the uh, controlled experiment quiz. And remember your login for Quizstar is first name, last name, all lowercase, uh, no spaces in between. And then your password is your first initial, last initial, and four digits. All right, everyone. Good luck. See you tomorrow in class.